One of the most successful treatments for seizures and epilepsy when no medication can control your seizures is doing an epilepsy surgery. And epilepsy surgery is taking out one area of the brain to help the seizures to stop and even treat them. But sometimes it is difficult to localize exactly where the seizures are coming from in the brain. And now we have an excellent tool that can help localize exactly which brain area that causes the seizures to happen and what are the functions of the brain that we can do. And this tool is MEG or magnetoencephalogram. So MEG is a device that can detect the magnetic field of the brain. So we know EEG, it can detect the electrical activity of the brain and MEG detects the magnetic fields of the brain and it is very, very, very sensitive and, and detects the activity inside the brain and tell you exactly where the seizures are coming from. So this device is unique. There are only 141 devices all over the world and this device is very delicate and gives you excellent information on where the seizures are coming from. So we can use MEG to locate where the seizures are coming from for preparation of epilepsy surgery. Also, it can map the normal function. So we'll tell you exactly which area of the brain you're talking from, which area of the brain you can feel the sensation from, which area of the brain you can use to mo move your arm or leg, and which area of the brain you can hear, or even which area of the brain you can see. So it gives you an excellent map of all the brain functions. All right, for a typical MAG day, let's have our scientist, Dr. Susan Boyer, show you all around the MEG system. Welcome to the MAG lab. On a typical day, the patient's gonna arrive in the MAG lab and we're gonna have you change into a gown, taking off all your street clothes and any jewelry or any metal that you have in your body. So sometimes when patients come for an MEG scan, they have dental work that is metal. And so if they've had an MRI, it's magnetic. And so we wanna scramble those magnetic fields. And the easiest way to do that is with a, uh, a degausser or a videotape eraser. And so what we do is we put it over their head, we energize it, and pull it off the head and then let go of the button. And what this does is it scrambles all the magnetic fields in the metal in your mouth and makes you magnetically quiet. And then you're gonna come into the mag. We're gonna have you seated here as we put on the electrodes for the EEG because we record EEG and MEG simultaneously. Once we've put on your EEG electrodes, we're gonna have you come on into the mag. Actually, this is the shielded room that keeps out all the electric and magnetic fields. So they're gonna isolate your brain. So we're only gonna be looking at the magnetic fields from your brain. We're gonna have you lay on the bed here. We're gonna put the sensor around your head. Inside that helmet are 148 MEG coils, just like a car antenna that measures radio waves, but these antennas are gonna measure the very weak magnetic fields from your brain. When you're laying in there, we usually want you to close your eyes and go to sleep so that we can look at your resting state brain networks. We are able to find areas of your brain that maybe have abnormal activity if you have epilepsy or your normal resting state networks if you don't have any neurological disorders. The other thing we can do is we can have you look at pictures and look at where in your brain language is activated. We can also tap your fingers and look at where your sensory cortex is and these are so important for the neurologist and the neurosurgeon to understand where these eloquent areas in your brain are so that the surgeon doesn't resect into them. You're gonna lay in here for about an hour while we're looking at your resting state activity. And then if we're gonna look at some of the picture naming and somatosensory or auditory or motor responses, those are gonna add about a half an hour for each of those modalities. Once we're done with that, then we're gonna bring you back outside of the room and take off the EEG electrodes that we applied and then you'll be on your way. Your whole day here in the Meg Lab will probably be about four hours, maybe five, depending on how many evoked responses or other areas in the brain that were requested for uh, looking at functional uh, locations in your brain. Let me show you how I process the MEG signal. So we record the MEG signal in the lab, and then we bring it to this computer, and here, we have all the data information. So here is the yeah, MEG signal, all the data. We have 148 channels. And here it shows you how the brain activity. So we kind of pick a spike where the activity is. And then, and then the spike will be located in the brain. So it's kind of like a 3D brain model. So look at this. So this is the right side of the brain. And this is the left side of the brain right here. And we locate where the brain activity is exactly in the brain. And we put a, a dipole. And this activity also shows us the extent of the activity in the brain. 
And we do this for multiple areas of the brain to kind of localize exactly where the seizure focus is. And we can do this also for EEG. So this is the EEG signal as well. So we can switch from EEG to MEG, and you can see there are uh, signals on EEG that sometimes can be complementary and sometimes adds a new uh, locations. So for example, this, those are uh, one of the EEG spikes that we can do to locate in the brain and we can also map it on the brain. And this is a very, very good uh, tool that we use to localize the uh, epilepsy activity in the brain. So this device is super powerful. It helps a lot to localize where exactly the seizure activity coming from the brain to better plan surgeries and make it more successful. In addition, it also can be a powerful tool for research. We can use MAG to do research and know all the functions of the brain and how the networks of the brain work and how they connect with each other. We have conducted so many studies on the brain using MEG for traumatic brain injury, for schizophrenia, for autism. And one of the interesting stories I have for autism is that when we tested uh, normal kids who are looking at pictures, normal kids will look at uh, the picture and they will activate the frontal lobe when they make uh, connections with the person. However, with kids with autism, they activated the back of the brain, the occipital lobe and the parietal lobe, only just to make uh, looking at the pictures function without any emotional connection. So this is an interesting idea that we can understand with MEG how the brain works and what are the functions of the brain. So there are so many uses for MEG for epilepsy. If somebody has epilepsy focus that is not localized by EEG, or if the brain MRI was normal completely and we could not localize where the seizures are coming from, then the MEG will help. If the EEG does not show any spikes and you know that somebody has epilepsy, the MEG will show the spikes because this is more detailed and more sensitive. And if you have a large lesion, there's a big scar in the brain, tumor or a, a trauma or a stroke, then the MEG will tell you exactly which part of the scar where the seizures are coming from. Also, it can help you if you have multiple areas of the brain that are multiple scars or somebody like have tuberous sclerosis and have many tubers, you can locate exactly which one of them is causing the seizures and take it out. The MAC can help both adults and children. So basically, probably anyone can get MAG unless their head is so large that they could not fit into the MAG uh, system. MEG is different than MRI. Uh, MRI it will give magnetic uh, pulses to do brain imaging, and MEG does not give any uh, magnetic signal, it only detects the magnetic signals inside the brain. So MEG and MRI are completely different things, they're not related at all, but we use the images we got from MRI to locate the brain activity that we got from the patient specifically. So basically MEG is just an antenna that detects the magnetic fields and it does not give any magnetic impulses or any magnetic fields. So you are not in a magnetic field at all. And also it is having highly shielded room that is isolated from the universe so that we can detect only the brainwave because the MEG is so sensitive and delicate and it can, be, it can even detect people who are walking down the street and affects the signal so we make sure it's completely isolated in this room. So this was a very cool device and if you have seizures and seizures are not getting better, there is one medication that we just had that really changes lives and works very well for seizures. You can watch this video about this new medication and stay healthy and see you in the next one.